Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, people of God. God bless you, my Facebook friends, my YouTube family and friends, my Twitter family and friends, and, and all of my friends uh, uh, on Facebook. Uh, I pray that uh, my last video was a blessing to you. Uh, I pray that all of the videos, uh, that they are a blessing uh, to you. Uh, and I pray today that you continue to allow them to uh, be a blessing to you. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel uh, under Ronald Fabian. And um, you can go there if you would like to listen at other videos that I, I have um, um, put forth. You could go there and uh, I believe that there are some things there uh, that would bless your spirit. Today what I want to talk about uh, is going to be a two-part series. Uh, and today I want to deal with uh, the woman's aspect of discerning uh, your mate from God, discerning your mate from God, how to discern uh, that that is uh, your mate or, or, or uh, that is the man uh, that God has uh, for you. Um, uh, you know, there, there's a thing of prophetic marriages. I'm going to deal with that. But I want to talk about, I want to talk to those sisters that uh, you're sitting and waiting and you have a couple of men in sight. You have a couple of guys in sight that you uh, could be interested in. Uh, but you don't want to make that mistake uh, that so many of us have made in choosing the wrong person. You, you 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 have surrendered to the Lord. You have kept yourself from the Lord, and you have these guys that that are showing interest in you, or there is a guy or guys that um, that have really been uh, uh, you know um, drawing your attention, and you 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 want to be married, but you just don't know how to discern. Uh, you've heard that just a man, you know, having a Bible and going to church, uh, that, that just is not going to do. And some people have made bad, bad decisions and, and hate themselves and the world for it. But I believe that the Word of God uh, is a teacher. I believe that the Word of God, uh, the Bible, is its own interpreter. I believe uh, that uh, God would not have us ignorant. And if we search the Scriptures, if we search the Scriptures, uh, I think uh, God will take care of that. I have a saying that uh, uh, ignorance, when knowledge is not available, is excusable. Uh, but ignorance, when knowledge is available is inexcusable. It's, it's no excuse for you to be ignorant when God has given us knowledge. And I believe that the Bible gives us uh, the knowledge of God. So today we want to deal with uh, the knowledge of discerning uh, your mate. How to discern. Be very discerning. I use the word discern uh, meaning to be able to distinguish uh, from the, the, the true and the false uh, 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 men in the church. I'm, 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 this is for the women now. How you will observe the man. How you can discern the man. I'm not saying go throw yourself self add in, I'm not saying that, but uh, if you discern him, uh, you, you, you can smile a little bit more if he fit what you've discerned from the word of God. And I like to start from the beginning, the origin, uh, the, the beginnings uh, of, of God's work and the way that God does a thing. And that's in the book of Genesis, and it's with our forefather, Adam. And uh, we're going to go in there, I'm going to do some reading, then I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to extrapolate what I believe uh, would be some wisdom, some, some, some nuggets to kind of give you something, uh, so that uh, you won't be um, sitting in church, you know, lonely forever, or, or ignorant, uh, or, or going for everything that some man tell you. You'll be able to discern uh, the hand of God on his life. Amen. That's what you want to discern. You want to always discern the hand of God on his life. Not if he speak in tongues, not if he take his Bible, not if he go to church. You want to discern the hand of God and the working of God on and in his life. So I pray that this will be a blessing to you. Father, I thank you in advance right now that you're going to increase my understanding. You're going to remove me and you're going to come forth with the wisdom and revelation that I believe uh, that you have given me as I gleaned handfuls of purpose uh, from your word. 
And so first of all, I want to start off with Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. I'm going to go through some chapters. I'm going to read, uh, and I believe, I'm gonna, I believe that uh, this will bless your Holy Ghost. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, turn with your Bible. I want you to follow me, women, uh, because this is going to bless you, and you also can see other insights, okay? All right. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28, uh, verse 26, I'm sorry, 27 and 28. And listen to what the word of God reads. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now in Genesis chapter 1, we see the language when we see God said or God is in conversation uh, with someone. I believe it is the covenanters. It is the covenanters, the, 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 the three, the Father, the Son, uh, and the Holy Ghost uh, that, that God said, let us make men in our image. So there was a counsel uh, from the Godhead when it came to making a man. This is the order of creation. I always believe that God, before God do a thing, he always talks about it before he does it. He always talks about it before he does it. So in Genesis chapter 1, you see God talking about what uh, uh, he's going to do as if it's already done. Because in his mind, it's already done. So now to start off, listen at what God said. Uh, he said, God said, let us make man uh, in our image. Now to understand and discern this mate from you, uh, he must be a man uh, that bears the image and the likeness of God. Did you get that? He must be a man uh, that bears the image and the likeness of God. God said, let us make. That means that God's hand has been on this man. Did you get that? You can discern God's hand on this man, meaning that he is saved. He is saved, listen now, and he is one that is bearing the image and the likeness of God. His, his spirit is renewed. He, he is someone that he has a God-like spirit. That is something you can't deceive a person too long. You, you may, yes, you, you may get by for a, a day or two, a day or three, or a month or two, a month or three, but eventually, listen now, if you have not been created by God, your, your true nature is gonna manifest. Number two, in discerning your mate, uh, I mean, I mean, number one, uh, uh, letter B, the man should understand his role of leadership and dominion in both the natural and the spiritual. The man should understand his role of leadership and dominion in both the natural and the spiritual. In other words, you can discern as you listen now, you're discerning, you're observing him. He's a man. He's no little boy. He's a man. Uh, he walks with authority. He exudes authority. He exudes leadership. He exudes dominion. Uh, you may see him. He may look a little mean, look a little stern, but look past that because that's his madness. He, he's the, I know you want a man, right? Okay. He's a man. Um, and it, he, it, it, it makes sure that he understands his role. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. He understands that he rules in the natural and he also understands his rule and authority in the spiritual. Number C, the, I mean, let us see, the blessings of God should be evident on his life. The blessings of God should be evident on his life. Evident, mean, it means able to be seen. You can put your finger that, you know, he's a blessed man. Uh, he's created in God's image. 
he 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 has the likeness of God. You know, he's a godly man. Listen, he walks in his authority. And discerning this, this means in the prayer, uh, doing prayer time, doing uh, you know prayer and different things like that. Listen at his prayer. Listen how he pray. Is he a man that takes authority? Because this is one that you will be submitting yourself to, that you will be loving and and and, and coming up under. Uh, you know, you know. Can, can you can you see uh, that he walks in authority? You know, can you see that that's going to be your king? Can you see it? Do he, does he have that kingly state about him? Okay, and that the blessings of God is on him. He has the blessing. I'm not I'm not talking so much about monetary things, but he's a blessed man. You know, he, he, he's, he, you know, he, he's just blessed. I don't, I don't want to prolong that. Just, he's a blessed man because the Bible says, and, and God blessed him. Amen. Um, in verse 26, uh, it says, uh, and God blessed him. God blessed him. And God said unto them, be fruitful, uh, and multiply. Uh, and I want to deal with, uh, we see that the man must be in the image of God and the likeness of God. Uh, he must understand his leadership and his dominion. Uh, he must have the blessings of God on his life. These are the things that, that you're going to need to discern now. Uh, in verse chapter, in, in chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, uh, it says, and we're going to read the word on this wise, 7 through, verse 7, yeah, just 7, okay? And it says, uh, and there, and there, but there went up, verse 6, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God formed man. And the Lord God formed, formed him. Not only must he be born again, but as he went through the formation process, his formation, God forming him, listen, to be the exact replica of Christ. God forming him to, uh, 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 to, 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 to fit what he has ordained uh, for him to do. Do you see the formation of God on his life? A praying man, a man in the ministry, a man in the service of the king. Uh, number two, B, he must know and understand that without the hand of God on him, he is nothing. And the Lord God formed man, listen, out of the dust of the ground. Out of the, does he, does he walk with humility? Does, does he understand that he is but dust? That he walks with humility? Uh, that he's not prideful? He's not arrogant? You don't want to. You don't want to be with a prideful man. You don't want to be with a man that's arrogant. You don't want to submit yourself to a man that does not understand. Listen now, that the hand of God uh, was on his life, uh, and that and and that he understands that without God's hand on him, uh, he is nothing. Now you've entered into conversation with him, and you listen. Does he talk with humility? Uh, does he is he a braggart? Uh, uh, you know, is he self? Is he conceited? Is he is he into himself? And if you if you hear a man is always into himself, you don't need him. You, you don't you know? This is this is the discerning aspect. Um, uh, it, it should be evident that the Holy Spirit is at work in his life. Uh, it should be evident that uh, that the Holy Spirit is at work in his life. And it says, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Listen. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Breathing. Is it evident the Holy Spirit is in his life? Now, I, I'm, 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 the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The, the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. Is it evidence that the breath of God is on his life? See, you know these things. You're able to discern these things by getting to know him Getting to uh, observe him and be, uh, and, you know, being uh, around him. This is the work of God on your mate. Uh, 
It should be evident that his soul is alive to God. His transformation should be evident. Is it evident that his soul, uh, God breathed into his life and man became a living soul? You know, you can talk to some people, and I've talked to some people that's in the church, but they're still dead. They're still dead. They, they, they go to church, but they're still dead. Uh, they have no emotion for the things of God. Uh, they have no emotion uh, for the people of God. They're just in church, but they're dead. In other words, you be, you watch, you don't want a man that's, he's just come to church and he's just, you know, he don't worship. He don't praise the Lord. He don't pray. Are you listening to me? He may be attractive. You may be, he, listen, he may be so attractive. You may be so attracted to him. That you know, when you see him, you got to speak in tongues and bind every devil that you know. But is he a living soul? Is his soul set aflame by the fire of God? Is his soul set afire by the Spirit of God? Uh, do he understand his vision? Do he understand his purpose? Do he understand his destiny? Uh, still in Genesis chapter 2 uh, at verses 8 and 9. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do he understand his service and that God has a work for him? When you are in conversation with this man, do he talk about the work that God has for him? Do he talk about uh, the, 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 the purpose and the plan that God has for his life? The Bible says, and the Lord God planted a garden he, he, God planted a garden. The garden can speak of his ministry. To speak of his destiny. The place that God has ordained. A specific place. Do, uh, a specific place. That, do he understand that there is a specific place uh, that God has for him? A specific work that God has for him. Do he understand this? These are the things that you must discern. Uh, you know, that you have a man. Listen now. Uh, that not only have been formed by the hand of God, not only have been made by the hand of God, have the Spirit of God over his life, uh, that he, you know, that he's, uh, he's energetic concerning the things of God, uh, he's, his soul is set afire uh, on God, but do he, do, do he understand that God has an assignment for his life? These are the things you must discern. And, and planted a garden east and east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And there he put the man. There God put the man. See? He understand his work. He has received his assignment from the Lord. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And moving to verse 15, it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of the Eden to dress it, and to keep it. Is this man that you are interested in or that is showing interest in you, is he a student of the scriptures? Is he a student of the scriptures? Is he a man that studies the Bible? This is the type of man that you want. It, do, you know, do he know his word? The Bible says God put him in the garden, put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. This is somebody, you know, uh, uh, he's, he's in his ministry. 
He's, he's, he, he, you know, he knows his assignment. He understands where God has placed him. He even had a relationship with God. He had received all of this. Listen, and, and, and he has a specific assignment to dress and to keep to God. Listen, and is he faithful and responsible to the work God has given him? Is he faithful? When you sit and you talk with him and you talk to him about his vision and you talk to him about the things of God and you talk to him about the word of God, has he been faithful in the scriptures? Is he a student of the scriptures? And listen, has he been cultivating his ministry? When you talk to him about his ministry, that he can tell you what his ministry is. Adam knew that God had put him in the garden to till it and to dress it. He knew exactly what he was, where he was to be, where he was supposed to be. He knew exactly what he was supposed to be doing. Listen, and he knew how to do it. And that means that he was a man that's ready to work. Amen. Amen. This was brief, but I, I'm telling you, now when you go to the Word of God and you see this and you read this and you meditate it and you begin to apply it to that individual you're dating or that individual that is showing interest in you, this will help you. This will It will help you um, uh, if you want to get the video and you want him to sit down and look at it himself. Now, you know, if he's not there, he might throw a... Might throw a brick or something and, you know, thinking to hit me and bust it and break your computer. But you'd like to know that as well. Um, but praise the Lord. Uh, I pray that that this was a blessing to you. And I pray that uh, woman of God, uh, daughter of God, that you don't be deceived. Stay tuned now for the man. I'm going to show you how to recognize the mate that God has for you.